The top secret CIA cover-up of the UFO problem during the Cold War. Given the current interest in the United States Congress House Oversight Committee hearing on unidentified aerial phenomena taking place now, July 2023, with its extraordinary whistleblower claims that the US government has in its possession multiple, quote, crashed alien spacecraft, the team at Odysseus Files felt the time was right to make a short documentary about the alleged CIA cover-up of the so-called UFO problem during the Cold War period. The Central Intelligence Agency shares the year of its foundation with the first widely reported modern UFO sighting in the United States, after civilian aviator Kenneth Arnold claimed to have seen nine unusual objects flying in tandem near Mount Rainier, Washington on June 24, 1947. This seminal event sparked a UFO frenzy in the United States. This peaked in January 1953 as around the nation UFO sightings proliferated and press reports stoked the public's interest and anxiety. To find out if these mysterious phenomena posed a threat to national security, the CIA assembled a team of scientists. Cold War Anxieties The US government was concerned about the possibility of a rising national hysteria at a time when growing Cold War anxiety over the Soviet Union ranged from psychological warfare to complete nuclear annihilation. UFOs had started to become a major topic of discussion in the previous year. An article appeared in Life magazine in April 1952 titled Have We Visitors from Space? It stated that there was, quote, scientific evidence that there is a real case for interplanetary sources. Flying saucer sightings in Washington, D.C. were widely reported in newspaper headlines that July. The number of UFO sightings that were formally reported to the U.S. Air Force increased from 23 to 148 between March and June of that year. According to government documents, the CIA decided that it needed a national policy because of how much attention UFOs were receiving, insofar as what should be told to the public regarding the phenomenon, in order to minimise risk of panic. The Robertson Report, Panic and Hysteria In order to accomplish this, Howard Percy Robertson, a professor of mathematical physics at the California Institute of Technology, worked with the CIA's Office of Scientific Intelligence to assemble a group of non-military scientists in order to review Air Force records about UFO sightings dating back to 1947. The Robertson panel convened for a few days in January 1953. Project Blue Book, the latest Air Force investigation into the UFO phenomenon, was launched in 1952 and had followed the previous Project Sign and Project Grudge. Blue Book's project members, Captain Edward J. Ruppelt and astronomer J. Allen Hynek, were both questioned by the Robertson panel, who came to the conclusion that many of the sightings Blue Book had tracked were, in fact, explainable. For instance, after viewing footage of a UFO sighting that occurred on August 15, 1950, near Great Falls, Montana, the panel determined that what the footage actually captured was just the reflection of sunlight off the surfaces of two Air Force jet aircraft. However, it wasn't flying saucers or aliens that the panel perceived as a potential threat in relation to this phenomenon. John Greenwald Jr., the creator of The Black Vault, a YouTube channel and online radio podcast show that analyzes government documents on the subject of UFOs and UAPs, released through the Freedom of Information Act, claims that at the time in question there was a worry, quote, that the general public, with their panic and hysteria, could overwhelm the resources of the US government. Nick Pope, who worked for the UK Ministry of Defence's UFO programme from 1991 to 1994, claims that the CIA also appears to have feared foreign meddling, that, quote, the Soviets would find a way to use the huge level of public interest in UFOs to somehow manipulate, to cause panic, which could then be used to undermine national cohesiveness. This is implied in the Robertson Report, which the CIA withheld from the public until 1975, but which asserts that mass hysteria over UFOs could result in greater vulnerability to possible enemy psychological warfare. 
Educating the public. The panel recommended educational programs in order to debunk UFO sightings and instruct the public on how to recognize specific phenomena in order to address these potential vulnerabilities. The scientists on the panel suggested using books, TV shows and movies to teach people. They even suggested working with the Walt Disney Corporation to help create these media. The report stated that, quote, Such a program should tend to reduce the current public's gullibility and their susceptibility to clever, hostile propaganda. Did the government, in fact, carry out these programs? According to Leslie Keane, author of UFOs, Generals, Pilots and Government Officials Go on the Record, one plausible instance is a 1966 Walter Cronkite television special titled UFO, Friend, Foe or Fantasy. According to Keane, one of the Robertson panellists wrote a letter to another member of the Robertson panel and stated that he helped organise a CBS TV show around the Robertson panel conclusions. The programme concentrated on disproving UFO sightings, just as the panel had suggested. The Condon Report A Whitewash? The government requested a second, more thorough scientific investigation into Project Blue Book between 1966 and 1968, which was carried out by physicist Edward U. Condon. Despite some CIA involvement, the Condon Committee was commissioned by the US Air Force, carried out by researchers at the University of Colorado, and its findings were made public right away. Similar to the Robertson panel, it came to the conclusion that most sightings could be explained and that UFOs pose no threat to the United States. Additionally, it recommended ending Project Blue Book's UFO investigations, which the Air Force did in 1969. Many researchers into UFO sightings have argued that the government never actually gave the Robertson panel, the Condon Committee or even Project Blue Book access to review the most sensitive sightings, which might have contained classified information. One of the key pieces of evidence for this is a 1969 memo from Brigadier General Carol H. Bollander that claims the Air Force didn't report all UFO sightings to Project Blue Book and that it would keep looking into sightings that might pose a threat to national security even after the project was completed. Unidentified aerial phenomena or UAPs are monitored by the Navy today. Critics have also asserted that the Robertson panel the Condon Committee and or Project Blue Book's true objectives were never to determine what was actually causing UFO sightings, but rather to allay public anxiety by debunking them whether credible or not. If this assessment is accurate, does this imply that the government was hiding information about extraterrestrial life? Furthermore, there's the notion that the government may also have been trying to hide some of its own actions in some instances. Since the conclusion of Project Blue Book, according to the CIA, more than half of the UFO reports the government received in the late 1950s and early 1960s had something to do with the classified U-2 and Oxcart spying programs. Perhaps the truth lies somewhere in between. Project Blue Book would frequently explain away such sightings by linking them to natural phenomena such as ice crystals and temperature inversions, states Gerald K. Haynes a historian for the CIA's National Reconnaissance Office. This was supposedly done to prevent the public from learning about these secret flights. The CIA rather smugly tweeted about this in 2014, quote, Remember reports of unusual activity in the skies in the 50s? That was us. Given the CIA's track record over the years when it comes to accountability and telling the truth, it is a spy agency after all. We should, of course, take anything they say with a rather large grain of salt. Returning to the beginning of this video where we mentioned the current House Oversight Committee hearing on unidentified aerial phenomena, we wonder whether this latest effort to hold the government to account will be any more successful than previous attempts, given the amount of stonewalling by the Pentagon that we already see taking place. President Eisenhower's farewell address comes to mind, quote, in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. 
The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Thank you for watching Odysseus Files. For more interesting content like this, tap on your screen and check out our other documentaries. We publish new content regularly, so consider subscribing and stay tuned.